gentlemen, Riot Fest 2023 with Q101. I'm Case, the producer, with a case for Riot Fest. And when this whole thing came about, I had one band that I wanted to talk to, one man that I wanted to interview. I'm standing across from him right now. It's Graham from High Vis. How you doing, man? I'm all right. I'm fucking tired. You're can tired? I, can I swear? Uh, we'd prefer you not, but okay. if you let a few fly, it's Sorry. okay. I'm tired. Yeah, there you go. I'm good. I'm good. Well, so normally when I interview a band, I, I sort of envision the first minute of the interview. I normally have an intro planned, and... You kind of ruined it for me because all week leading up to this, I was going to tell you about how April 6, 2023, we were at the Cobra Lounge. It was High Viz and Daisy, yeah. and it was the best show that I've seen this year. And then about 12 hours ago, I watched you at the Empty Bottle for a Riot Fest after show, and it was just as good. And now I, I don't even know how to begin. What has this year been like? High Viz has exploded uh, into North America. You're doing great things. You're very tired, but it, I, I would imagine it's been a great journey to that tiredness. It's been, yeah, it's been boss. It's like it's my, the last the Cobra Lounge show was amazing. Yeah, and it was like such a mad, rousy show. Obviously, we never expected nothing. We've never been here. And then, yeah, last night it was sick. The vibe that I I've gotten from everybody that saw you on that first leg of the tour was like, enjoy this while it lasts, because this band is never gonna play in a place that small again. And I think the thing that's so special about it is, you know, you know, just from going to gigs your entire life, there's there's shows that you go to because they're good bands and it's gonna be a fun time. And then there's gigs that feel like events, like something's really happening. Yeah. And that's what the energy in the room was at that show at the Cobra Lounge was like, oh, this is this is different. You know, we have yeah. a lot of bands roll through town. They're not all like this. Thanks. <laughs> I, I can't say anything about that. I'm just there, innit? <laughs> no, it's been it's been incredible. I mean, your your live show is as intense as it gets, and it's so interesting because it feels like this band is in a way, sort of trying to break down the walls of toxic masculinity and trying to be a little bit open. How do you balance that sort of thing, you know, being, uh, you know, a guy that shows aggression but also trying to maybe show it in the right way? Yeah, I think it's, like, I never thought we weren't trying to do anything, if you know what I mean. It just sort of, like, I guess it's just something I've been, like, exploring in myself and, like, obviously what I've grown up around. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's like, just, it, hardcore is such a good place for it, really, because, obviously... We've been given opportunities to do this now in front of loads of people, and people seem to be like receptive of it. And we're just doing what we're doing for ourselves, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's yeah. Not yeah. Like, I'm not. I don't want to tell anyone what to do. I'm just like, look, well, I feel a bit better because I've like addressed all the things <laughs> that make me so angry, but I'm still angry in it. So, well, well let, let's talk about you. Are, are you somebody that you know grew up an angry young guy, and maybe now you're going to therapy to sort of try to mellow out a little bit? Does some of it just come with age? I think. I don't know. Like I was angry as a kid, and I've always had a lot of energy. I was angry because a load of things. I've got yeah, a lot of like things in my life. I just I, I just was apparently quite an angry person. Uh -huh. I, found, I found hardcore and like various other things, and it was just like a, a good place to put my energy. I think and like I've always, I just thrived on the kind of violence of those shows and stuff like that because it's kind of like everyone's you know consensually agreeing to being a part of this kind of violent act it must make sparks me in the face yeah I'm like, yeah to, to, to an outsider it's yeah. like oh my god they're killing each other but it's really hard yeah. to explain to somebody no this is actually bringing me more joy than anything yeah yeah that's the thing the same with like training muay thai and boxing and all that like i just you know i just look like i loved it it's just one of those things that like, i enjoy i don't want like want to hurt anyone myself. i don't like i enjoy the like the yeah sort of you're not you're not in the pitch to physically injure anybody but you nah. know somebody Somebody takes a black eye, you know, at some point. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's part of the fun Things almost. happen. Yeah. Uh, who were some of your gateway bands in hardcore? Who were some of the first acts that you heard that you went, yep, this is what I'm going to do now? When I, I saw a band called Knuckle Dust from London uh -huh. when I was young, and they were like, they, the way they dressed, everything, it was just, I was just like, oh, rah, they're playing, like, super aggressive guitar music, but looking like just like people, like normal street kids, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was like, that's... Sick, and then that got me into a load of like harder hardcore. And there's a lot, a lot, there's a load of people in, in Liverpool where I grew up, and it was a really like great scene. Got, I, I kind of like got introduced to it. I had like old, like olders who showed me the way, you know, in, in hardcore, and like they're all put, yeah, just put me onto loads and loads of stuff. I was lucky. I'm curious uh, because you know I grew up in the Midwest, and I've always had an affinity for bands from England. The mm. Smiths are my favorite band. I love okay. Oasis, yeah. which I just heard your Morning Glory cover from yeah, yeah. Uh, Outbreak Festival. Oh my God, that was so incredible! Uh, that was that. Was, I didn't know that was coming, and I clicked on the video, and I saw in the little scrubber at the bottom Morning Glory, and I'm alone in my apartment going, "Oh my God, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen?" And it was the sickest thing ever. Oh, thanks. Did you? Have an affinity? Is there like a weird thing in England where you guys have an affinity for American bands or American culture just because it's something abstract to you, or no? Well, I mean, like, 
hardcore came from America, yeah. you know, so like New York hardcore, especially when I was young, was I like obsessed about all that stuff, you know, like when I discovered like Antidote or like Outburst out, out or so, you know what I mean? I was, yeah, like, yeah. Those, those early records or like really bouncy hard hardcore, I was just like, this is cool, they all look cool as shit, they were like, like you know what I mean? I just, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I loved it. Um, so yeah, I guess like it goes back and forth, doesn't it? You know what I mean? It, like people go through phases of being like Anglophiles or whatever yeah. as well. And at the moment, people seem to like English stuff. It's cool. That's true. I, I'm a big fan. So, uh, you know, you obviously have, you know, such an incredible hardcore pedigree with everything leading up to High Viz. High Viz is a bit of a change sonically. You know, I think you said, you know, at Cobra Lounge, you're like, you know, we never thought this group that kind of sounds like Oasis would take off the way they did. Do you get in your head as somebody that grew up a hardcore kid with not being heavy enough now? Because hardcore certainly expanded in sound with military gun and what Turnstile is doing. You know, I think we're a little more accepting of, of other things coming into the fray, but do you yourself go like, oh, this is a soft one. They, they aren't gonna like this. You know what, I don't I don't even care really. Cause I just like, I, like, I don't write anything. You know what I, mean? I, I mean, I write words and that, but I don't, I yeah. can't write music. And I'm just always like, yeah, that's sick. I think a lot of the time, even the like, the kind of bouncier, like more melodic stuff, a lot of it's got a load of energy and yeah. it's like, I'd, it's just different, isn't it? Do you know yes. what I mean? I, I saw you perform Altitude last night. Loads of energy. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> well, that's the, I think I, like, I'll always approach stuff like I'm in a hardcore band because that's what I want to... When I see a band, I want to see... I want to be convinced. I want to be scared. Or yeah. I wanna, you know what I mean? I want, like... I want to believe what they're saying, yeah. basically. And that's the thing, like... I don't, you know... For myself, I'm like... I'm not trying to perform for anyone. I'm just doing the thing, really. I like that, that you, know, you want people to believe what you're saying. I, I certainly get that from the song Trauma Bonds, which I think is really what took you guys to another level. It was the first thing that I heard from you was I had a friend send me this and go, yo, this is something. And then I heard it, I was like, oh, this is this is something. Can you sort of talk me through the process of how that song came to be? Um, the, it, came, it came from like, I mean, lyrically it was just about like uh, reflecting on sort of my upbringing and like a lot of kind of people within subcultures I've been involved with and like they're sort of like what are essential like toxic traits like a, a, yeah. a lack of a better way I'm not trying to use like sort of fairy people's ways or something, no but, but it's yeah like a load of stuff that you like accept as normal and you know a lot of the violence involved in that stuff and sort of just trying to like taking a step back and looking at it and starting to choose like what you know is this normal it's probably not really and it's also quite like hard to take on when you've like you've buried how you actually feel about this stuff even if it's you know difficult so yeah I am um, it was just kind of a process of that, really, just reflecting on the thing myself. And then, as a song, I don't know, it's all them lot. They write, you know what I mean? They're yeah. Really good at writing songs. Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> um, I, I, I was thinking about that song in relation to something that Jeremy Baum from Touche Amore once said, because he obviously wrote the record Stage 4, mm -hmm. which is about his mother passing of cancer. And then after they toured that record, he was like, yeah, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but he's like, it's really hard. You go show to show. And everybody has a different story about somebody dying of cancer. It's a little Bro, heavy. It's, a, it's. Are you running into that same thing now? Because yeah, you're so open. It's like, and it's, and it's, it's mad in it because it's like people talk to me about their experiences and like how they relate to the songs, and it's like obviously it's like a positive thing for people, and then it, it, it's just it's a lot to take on. I think a lot of the time because I'm just like I don't want you know what I mean. I never want any responsibility or yeah, anything, yeah, which yeah. is hard like maybe that's like a privileged position to be in or something but like when you just do a thing which you're doing for yourself you know what i mean i'm not no one's right like none of us were like oh let's write a song which people will relate to yeah you're just like i'm writing from my life experience and it's like it's there's nothing more than that really and then yeah. all of a sudden it has an effect and it's like that's it's amazing like it's it's so cool but also yeah. like can't like hard when you, you're taking that on quite a lot i guess like of people but I, f I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm not complaining about it. It's a lot, and it life's hard. Like it's kind of like nice to share stuff with people. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious because you know, like I referenced, you have this tremendous pedigree, and you know, something like the Dirty Money Trapped Under Ice Split that rips, but it didn't have the same penetration that High Viz now has. Is there a moment within the band where you guys knew that this is a project that that people really care about? Is there, you know, one time on stage or one time um, backstage something that was said to you that really resonates with you? I don't know if there was one moment, really. I think after Blending came out and then we started doing, like, more, I don't know, just do, like, doing interviews and doing and playing mm -hmm. these shows and the shows started getting bigger and then doing more reality. Maybe Outbreak Fest last year, like, yeah. the year before. I was and that, like, that's on YouTube for anybody that hasn't seen it. Yeah. High Visit Outbreak 2022, and then you guys just came back and were even bigger and better in 2023. Yeah, yeah. That was mad. I mean, because it's, there's, it's such, there's such a moment in a moment for 
like I don't you know I don't want to say hardcore necessarily because a lot of it's like alternative music now mm. you know it's really like there's a spotlight on it um, but it was yeah it was a cool moment and I think if you take it for what it is you know what I mean then that's cool yeah I think it's like an exciting time it's exciting to you know be able to be a part of this thing as long as you're not compromising yourself it's cool absolutely one more thing before you go, go on. you were once quoted as saying start a band go skateboarding write your nickname on as much stuff as possible let's talk about skateboarding uh was that a, an avenue for <laughs> I, I know for me so like skateboarding for me that's where i discovered so many bands you know yeah. it's it really not as much punk as like i heard Susie and the banshees for the first time through skateboarding one of the first times i heard morrissey was through skateboarding do you have any big um, musical discoveries through that outlet in in liverpool where, where i grew up basically or oh, there's a shop called lost art and a lot of the skaters and who hung around there they were all involved in the punk community and it was really like interlinked there was a night at the, uh, the skate park at Rampworks in Liverpool they did like a, a thing called Night of the Living Dead where they'd have like hardcore bands playing and all us we were just kids in it we'd go and see this stuff we'd see people kicking fuck out of each other and being like this is amazing <laughs> you know what I mean? so it kind of like it all I guess and all all like those subcultures that really like informed everything really it's all, it's all one to me you know yeah I mean? absolutely oh my god I feel the same way uh, do you have a favourite skateboarding part of all time um, how it cooks part in the consolidated video oh how yeah it, how it cooks like he's, he's a lad from by ours he was just like most rago yeah but i mean also like uh, all the palace lot from london are all like all mates and yeah. yeah that's awesome well i think you're doing great things i think your music's really important i think your live act is incredible Stop it. it's onwards <laughs> and upwards from here man thank you so much before i uh, before i let you go if people want to support support high viz what's the best way to do so I don't know. Come and watch us, I guess. C come, come and watch High Viz. It will be worth <laughs> Next time they're in your little town, buy a ticket, go see them. They have my favorite concert of 2023 and now my second favorite show of 2023 awesome. after last night. So keep on doing your thing, Graham. Hey, I really thank appreciate you so much. it. Safe. Of course, man. Okay.